Hello everyone! One of the biggest additions to the Total War games in the Warhammer series is the addition of spells. Heroes and Lords of the Wizard type are able to cast incredibly powerful magic upon the battlefield. Anything from a hail of fireballs raining down on a given area, to a large area of effect debuff that weakens all nearby enemies, to a massive black vortex that moves of its own accord, sucking in units and dealing heavy damage wherever it goes. In this video, I'll walk you through spells and how they work. Regardless of whether you've played Total War games before or not, you probably want to watch this guide if you're new to Warhammer. Spells can be organized into three main categories. Buffs, debuffs and damage spells. They can be further subdivided into a number of different types based on how they specifically affect the battlefield. Buffs and debuffs are really simple. For their duration, they apply either a positive or a negative effect, respectively, to the units targeted. Also, keep in mind that against debuffs that don't deal any damage, magic resistance provides no protection. Those dwarves will lose the same amount in stats as everyone else, the short bastards. Damage spells are more complex, as there's more factors in play that will determine how effective they are. Damage spells always deal magic damage, though they might also have fire damage or armor piercing damage layered over it. This makes spells in general a great way to deal with units that have physical resistance, as that will not protect them from spell damage. As I said before, spells are also subdivided into seven groups. Direct single target, direct area of effect, Projectiles, barrages, explosions, winds and vortexes. Direct spells are the easiest to use, since they hit nearly instantly and can't be dodged. Buffs and debuffs always count as direct single target or direct area of effect spells. Direct single target spells allow you to select a single unit and directly apply the spells effect to that unit. Buffs and debuffs apply their effect for the specific duration, while damage spells cause their damage over time. Direct area of effect spells are a bit trickier. They can target either a single unit or a location. Area of effect buffs apply their effect instantly to all units in the area. Debuffs and damage spells instead create a persistent area of effect, which will be attached to either the location or the unit it was cast on which means the spell's effect will move with the unit if a unit was targeted. Units walking into the area after the spell was cast are still affected by it, while units leaving the area before the spell has run its course will lose its effects. Projectiles fire a single or a group of projectiles at a target, like a fireball or a group of green bolts, which fly through the air much like a cannonball would with a slight arc, and upon hitting something deal damage. Some of these explode, making them good against infantry blobs, while others don't and are thus better against single targets. Projectiles are quite hard to hit, but are generally quite cheap for what they do. They are best used from the back of a flying mount or from atop a hill. Be warned not to cast a projectile spell from behind your own units, because if you're not careful your spell will hit your own units in the back. Barrages summon a hail of projectiles that land on the target area from above. These are generally really powerful area of effect spells that do their damage over time in a given area. They can even be cast on enemy units on walls. And will even hit flying units if flying units fly through the area of effect while the projectiles are landing. They are best used on dense infantry formations. Explosions will deal a bunch of damage in an expanding shockwave after a short delay at the target location. They hit hard and are hard to avoid. Again, these are best used on dense infantry formations. Winds are also large area of effect spells, but are rather slow moving compared to other types of area of effect spell making them a little easier to avoid. However, in return they do typically do a lot of damage across a huge area, larger than that of most other spell types.
Vortexes are the most expensive and potentially most powerful spells in the game. They create a long-lasting area of effect that deals constant damage to anything caught within it. For most of these, the area of effect will also move around, potentially hitting even more units as it does so. Vortexes are kind of a gamble due to their movement, but casting one at the heart of an enemy formation may just end up dealing an ungodly amount of damage. Or it may end up going back into your own formation and hurting your units, rather than the enemy. Summons are a rare type of spell not found in most lores. They summon a specified unit at the target location after a short delay. This makes summon spells amazing in many different situations. You can summon a unit behind an enemy unit that's currently already engaged with your army to nearly instantly flank that unit with your summoned unit. You can also summon melee units on top of ranged infantry to either stop them from firing or kill them outright. Summoned units even count towards whether you outnumber the enemy army or not when the timer runs out. However, summoned units always suffer from unbinding, which makes their health decay over time until they're dead, and summon spells have limited uses. Never use summon spells unless you can make immediate use of the unit you summon. Now that we understand the different types of spells in the game and how they work, we move on to the second most important topic. Power points. Each spell costs power points to cast, which you can see in the blue orb on the lower right portion of the screen. The number in the orb is the number of power points you currently have, which, in the rest of this video, we will try to refer to as your power point supply. You can have up to 30 power points in your supply at any given time. Right of the number, inside the orb is a blue bar that will slowly deplete as your stockpile of power points fills up. This is your power point reserve. Basically, as you use power points from your supply, your points are slowly drawn from your reserve to refill your supply. The more power points are currently left in reserve, as indicated by how full the blue bar is, the faster your supply replenishes. As your reserves are depleted, you'll eventually find that the recharge rate of your next power point becomes really long. Once you run out of power points in your reserve, your power point supply will stop charging. You can recover power points through special abilities on items or on your hero or lord. These add additional power points to your reserve, causing your supply to slowly increase again. Use these abilities often to keep your power point supply up. It's also important to note that the amount of power points you start with is always randomized. You might start with nearly 30 points or with just 3. It's impossible to say before the start of the match. However, remember that your opponent starts off with the same amount that you do. So if you start off with a lot of power points, so will your opponent. Lastly, there's overcasting. You can overcast spells by double-clicking their icon when you select them for casting, which has different effects based on which spell you're overcasting, but always results in a more powerful spell. Buffs can have increased duration or more powerful effects. Damage spells become larger or fire more projectiles. The bonus you get from overcasting differs greatly from spell to spell. However, not all spells can be overcasted, and overcasting comes with two big issues. One is that it significantly increases the cost of the spell. You'll cast a more powerful spell, sure, but at the cost of the number of spells you'll be able to cast throughout combat. In addition, overcasting comes with a 50% miscast chance. When your wizard miscasts, the spell still goes off, but your wizard takes a large amount of damage for his trouble. I don't know exactly how much damage this does, but since it seems to hit the heroes and lords with low health harder, we can assume that it's a flat amount. This means that overcasting is best done on lords or heroes that have the health pool to be able to take the hit, or can heal away the damage somehow. Note that normal spells never have a chance to miscast, though certain units and abilities can force a miscast chance on enemy wizards. That's it for spells. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you know someone who could use some pointers, feel free to direct them here.
Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all again in my next video.